Alright guys, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bored of the 3k challenge. This was supposed to be exciting, but wheeling GameStop just isn't as fun as I thought it was gonna be. And PMCCing the two times leveraged inverse bond ETF, ticker TBT, worked out great for a little while and I made some good money in October. And then I gave back almost all of those gains when bonds rallied in November. So here we are about two months since my last 3k challenge video and I'm up about $400 since then. My portfolio sits at about 3,970, which is about a 10% gain in the last two months. That's actually not bad, and I'd like to say I'm proud of this gain, but I'm not. So, this episode, starting December 1st, we're going for carnage. I need fun, I need zest, and I'm getting about $3,100 in dividends in January anyway. So if I do blow up this 3K account, I can just try again. But don't get me wrong, I'm not playing to lose. I'm just turning up the heat, and maybe this time I'll actually have fun with it. So here's the plan. I'm gonna liquidate everything except my QILG shares. I'm still sticking to the plan of building a portfolio, but I'm going all in, weekly options only, no exceptions, to sell short dated covered positions. Then I will use the premium received to take spicy bets on weekly calls and puts. Let's waste no more time. I'm dumping everything except QILG, and I'll close out this TBT PMCC first. I've been running it for a while, and the gains on the short call pretty much balanced out with the losses on the long call. So almost no gain here. And then I'll liquidate my shares of TBT and GME. Since I don't have options on the underlying anymore, there's no reason to hold these shares. After the purge, I will now have $3,323 in cash, and I already know what I want to do with it. Tomorrow is December 2nd, so we've got our big non-farms payroll and unemployment number. And that's going to make or break this recent Fed pivot uptrend. People are talking about these coming job losses. Hell, I'm talking about coming job losses. I just haven't seen them yet. I think the labor market is going to surprise people tomorrow, and the market should get assurance that the worst is behind us. There are some astrology lines that would indicate that the market's been meeting resistance, but I'm not feeling those. The market wants green, and I've just got a good feeling about tomorrow. So my first move will be to sell one day to expiration puts on Soxel, that's a three times leveraged semiconductor ETF. Semis are oversold. These companies are being priced like the world isn't gonna need semiconductors. And when the market does start popping green again, semis are gonna lead the way. And I want the cash flow that I can use to buy options. So I'm gonna sell two at the money puts expiring tomorrow for $40 each. That's gonna suck up $2,700 of buying power and simulate a long position. Robinhood's warning me that this is a leveraged position not suitable for long-term positions, but that's okay because this contract expires tomorrow. I'm way ahead of them. Obviously, this position is not nearly enough sauce to keep me amused, so let's YOLO this premium. And my kid just started screaming, so give me a pause. Okay, I had to switch to mobile because my dog threw up on my toddler and she was devastated, so it's a little bit later, got her cleaned up, and now I'm on my phone. But no change to the plan. Tomorrow is going to be a big day because of the jobs report and the non-farm payrolls. And like I said, I'm just feeling green. So I'm going to ride with the bulls here and open up TQQ. That's a three times leveraged NASDAQ ETF. I have $80 to toy with and I want to buy options expiring tomorrow, December 2nd. I'll flip over to calls and the premium I collected on Soxel will be adequate to buy me the next strike out of the money at $24 and I'll buy the real FD up here at $25. These two contracts are gonna cost me $57, which is gonna leave me with just enough premium in case I need to buy back my Soxel puts tomorrow. Okay, now that I look back as I'm editing this part of the video after market close, this position was pretty fucking stupid. I could have just bought the 2350 strike and the extrinsic cost would have been exactly $57 and I would have had more Delta. Instead, I traded Delta for Gamma, and now my position will only beat this 2350 call if the NASDAQ shoots up like 3% or more tomorrow. But the market is closed, so I can't change it, and here we are now. So I need to really root for tech going into tomorrow. Robinhood is going to call this a two-position order rather than list the legs separately, unfortunately, but that's okay. Here's our position so far. I love how Robinhood exaggerates these moves and makes it look like I score big already, putting me green for the day. But I've got this $648 in cash, that I don't want just sitting here. What I really want to do is sell another put, but this isn't enough money unless I want to wheel BlackBerry or SoFi. So I'm making the difficult decision to buy shares of JEPQ to act as a lower volatility NASDAQ long. I could go with QILG instead, but I don't want to mess with my buy and hold numbers. I enter JEPQ with the understanding that I will sell them when I have enough money to sell options on something worthwhile. 14 shares of JEPQ is gonna cost me 617, leaves me with just enough cash to manage stocks all tomorrow. All right, the market is closed and welcome to formally being a Robinhood trader, Mikey. I am now worse off than when I started this pivot and definitely worse off than I was 10 minutes ago. This seesaw is just something I'm gonna to have to get used to. Tomorrow's the big day, fingers crossed. Sometimes you just, you gotta laugh at yourself because if you don't have a sense of humor, then things like this are gonna ruin your whole week. Employee earnings were up, 
the economy added over 30% more jobs than expected, and unemployment is steady at 3.7%. This is generally a good labor report and the market is tanking as a result. So my best guess is that the market rallied early this week specifically because everyone expected that j Powell was satisfied with the damage. Inflation was down because the economy was slowing. We had a nice soft little recession. Therefore, j Powell is gonna pivot to a more dovish policy. Now that the labor market just beat expectations, there's less reason to be dovish and the market is pricing in a more hawkish j Powell. That's my best guess. So all four of my trading decisions this episode, selling puts on Soxel, buying calls on TQQ, buying shares of JEPQ, and holding shares of QYLG. All of these failed, I'm 0 for 4. My only not pitiful move was not buying more calls. So I'm gonna get hammered hard at market open. I'm definitely gonna ditch my TQQ calls for whatever I can get back, it's not gonna be a lot and then probably hold for assignment on Soxel. I would probably consider buying puts at open, except I have no cash left. So let's see what happens. So there's no two ways about it. I'm starting this new wave of a 3K challenge with an L, but it's not as bad of an L as I thought it was gonna be. I was down about 4% at the beginning of the day since my Soxel short puts went way in the money and the TQQ calls were completely wiped out. I recovered only $1 from the $24 call and the $25 call is illiquid. But Soxel made a decent comeback throughout the day. In fact, the whole market did. If I had bought calls at Friday's open instead of Thursday's close, I would have been in good shape. But remember what I was saying pre-market, I was ready to to buy puts at open if I had any cash left. And that would have been a fifth bad trading move this week. <laughs> so blessing in disguise, I didn't have enough cash to buy puts and instead I just held the calls and let them get wiped out. So this L really isn't that bad. I went from being down 110% on these Soxel short puts to being down less than 20%. So this is gonna be manageable. QYLG actually made it back to green and the JEPQ is only down eight cents. That's a big recovery from the dump this morning. If we look at SPY, the market almost completely recovered and even did go green at one point. TQQ on the NASDAQ, not quite as dramatic a recovery, but still not bad. I'll finish the week in the red by about 1.75% from a $56 loss on TQQ and a $16 loss on Soxel. I'll have to take assignment on Soxel, and what I'll probably do is sell these 1350 covered calls on Monday. That'll give me something like $80 premium to YOLO, assuming no big swings pre-market next week. Although I am starting this wave with an L, it's just a scratch. My portfolio lives to fight another day. I'll see you guys next week, and hopefully I can at least bring my record up to one for five. Right after a video in which I lost money in four different ways isn't the perfect time to be talking about our Discord, but if you want to learn something new or you want to hang out with some like-minded traders, come hang out on our Discord, the link is in the description. And if you're really not into trading or you're struggling at trading, we've also got a channel for the Freeloader Challenge, where we always dig up ways to make more money doing basically nothing. See you there. And don't forget to bring memes.